This is Jess, Wes and our daughter Izzy. After selling our house and most of our possessions at the end of 2021, we've packed up our Van Bevan to tour Australia. We are Life is Vanderful. Coral Bay, 45 minutes south of where we stayed at Ballara Station, and we're just here for the day to check out the lovely reef bay and its overcast. About to leave, already packing. Come with me, I'm not really asking. But we don't know About to see The world in action What we can be Life with no distractions We'll get away This is what we waited for Take my hand We'll make it somehow We can't miss out Cobber Blowholes is a short 45 minute trip north of Carnarvon. When you get here you're greeted by huge waves, rugged coastline and dramatic scenery. When the waves pound against the rocks here, the blowhole shoots super high into the air and it's just a great place to watch nature. So Carnarvon was just kind of like a stop on the way for us um, and we thought we'd come out to the blowholes which seems to be their main attraction. We had no idea what to expect and it is absolutely spectacular. Um, we've seen whales and all these uh, like literally I don't know how far would you say the whales were at like 30 meters or something. Yeah, 30 so meters. So close um, and they've just been sort of going back and forth and then these king waves could have kind of come up and splash against the rocks and these huge blow holes go up into the sky. It's really, really beautiful.
and now we've come just round the corner to a great little spot that looks perfect for snorkeling. Uh, you wouldn't think with all the waves we've just seen that it'd be that good, but there's a tiny little island and some reefs here that protect it to make it look pretty, pretty perfect for snorkeling. So Jess has jumped in first while I'm looking after Izzy, and then she'll let me know how good it is, and I might have a go next too. I've got that on video. Oh. <laughs> Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Buzz have little hands. Buzz have tiny hands. Oh, true. And this one as well? Do you get in that one? Is it almost the same size? T minus three minutes and counting. T minus three. We are go. We're off. So we've had a really fun morning at the Carnivan Space and Technology Museum. Izzy loved all the interactive displays uh, and it was great for Jess and myself as well. Um, so it's, yeah, it was really interesting, lots of fun for the kids um, and also yeah, interesting history about Carnivan and its role in the NASA tracking program in terms of communications with the Apollo missions for landing on the moon and broadcasting uh, messages and also TV pictures uh, to this part of the world. So yeah, fun day out and a good thing to do because it's the rainy day and it's our first rainy day since we've had, since we left Darwin. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty lucky on our behalf. Um, and now we're gonna hit the road and go to Denham, um, which is about three hours and 15 minutes till we get there. So yeah, probably a good day for traveling that kind of distance while it's while it's a rainy day. So, yep. Next stop, Denham and Monkey Mire. So just pulled up in Denham, and we realised yesterday or two days ago that the hot water tank in the boot or in the garage part of the van is um, loose and the brackets rattling. So I've had to get a 
long extension because I didn't have one a uh, quarter inch extension and going to try and uh, fix it got to crawl in the back so wish me luck yeah hi daddy I'll fix it hi yay hi hi hi, hi Izzy I'm just thinking you know how we were staying in denim originally for two nights yeah so we we're just booked an extra denim. night so we're double denim but now we're triple denim what did you think of that it's terrible I knew that was coming yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're at monkey Maya So we're at Monkey Mai this morning. It's a little bit overcast, but it's not raining, so that's the main thing. Uh, we're here to feed the dolphins, except, okay, this place is famous for being able to come down to the beach and feed the dolphins by hand. They're not doing that at the moment because of COVID, so apparently dolphins react the same way that humans do to COVID, so you can't actually touch them. So they're doing what they just call a dolphin experience where the dolphins come up close in the water and you get to view them close, so. So the first official feeding's at 7.45 and then they do another two after that if the dolphins are hungry, uh, but it's at no set times. So Jess just wrote the most romantic thing in the sand. I love, what's this say, what, what? Wine, I love wine. I thought I was gonna say I love Wes. So apparently there are three places in Australia where you can see wild dolphins up close on the shore and that's Tinkan Bay, Tangaluma at Morton Island and here at um, Monkey Maya. Um, we've done the other two experiences before where we've actually got to go on the water with fish and feed the dolphins and they've come up so nice and close to us. Um, here with the restrictions they come in but they don't come right up at you you can't see their faces you can't see them you know all happy with their mouths open you're just sort of seeing their fins gliding through the water so in comparison I would say that I prefer Tangaluma experience than Tinkan Bay than here um, but still lots of fun and a beautiful beach to walk up and down as well fix the tire on the van or replace the tire I should say um, didn't speak too much about it, we had, but the car was sort of tracking to the left and a little vibration when I had a look and it's had an egg on the tyre. It's sort of egged out and also it's through to, um, through to the, the steel belt in one, one little section, so glad that I inspected it and, and found that. Um, so it, it's hard to tell, like, sort of pulling one way, but because it's a big four-ton van and with the side winds, quite often you're at 20 degrees, the steering wheel angle anyway. Um, so you wouldn't think there's anything necessarily wrong because that happens so often. Um, but as I said, glad I had a look. Um, we're getting a tyre shipped up to Kalbari, which is our next, uh, next stop after this. So we're going to replace that in a couple of days' time. Mm -hmm. 
So we've come to Shell Beach, which is about 30 minutes out of Denham. And like the name suggests, the beach is just purely made up of shells. And because we haven't had enough exposure to the wind and cold conditions, we've come down to another point. I'm not sure what its name is, but it's just out of town, um, town of Denham, and it's just a sandbar going out to the out to the sea here. So yeah, we're just going to walk on that and um, get some more exposure to the cold conditions. Dark blue water, light blue water. And to complete the trifecta of cold, windy experiences, we've come to Eagles Bluff, uh, which again is really close to the town of Denham. And looking out here, it's yeah, beautiful turquoise blue water and the sun's come out just on cue. So it's our last day in the Shark Bay World Heritage Park and we're on the way out of the park and we've come to the stromatolites uh, which are some, some microorganisms and bacteria which are apparently supposed to be very unique to this area, unique to the world and yeah, very plentiful here and there's a nice jetty but I think it's been uh, destroyed by cyclone damage um, but it's supposed to be a nice area and also today we went to the post office um, to our PO box that we set up there and I got uh, drone replacement wiring parts so I can fix the drone um, so that actually arrived on Friday today's Monday uh, we got um, into Denham on Friday to the post office um, at about 3.30 um, to go pick up the part but it was shut so we ended up staying an extra night than what we needed to so we could be here for Monday morning with the post office reopened to get that part um, but it was um, it was good staying that extra day just allowed us to spend some time and not not rush and monkey mire and um, just just take in everything it had to offer so I said yeah we're here the last day and hopefully the the rain holds off it's been threatening to rain as we're driving here um, so fingers crossed we'll go have a look and see what this is like just walk down to the beach here and not only is the uh, boardwalk or pier or jetty or whatever um, closed due to cyclone damage as I mentioned before 
the, it's also fenced off so you sort of can't get close here colors look really good it's hard to tell because it's raining um, but yeah it looks looks nice <laughs> but it's a bit of an anticlimactic moment so <laughs> we're sort of ending our video here because uh, it's sort of the end of this part of the uh, part of the journey before we go to Kalbari so as I said a bit, bit anticlimactic but sometimes it happens sometimes you get lucky and come to a really nice place you didn't don't realize and don't know too much about um, today it's all shut but that's just what happens when you're uh, you're in van life and you just take each day as it comes and then go to the next place and and carry on so um, yeah thanks for watching this one uh, please make sure you subscribe and uh, our next video we're looking really forward to or well, the next part of the travels I should say should say is going to go to Kalbari National Park um, which looks looks epic so um, looking forward to that one so See you then, thank you.